Hello guys, my name is Darren Taylor and I am the executive chef for a top flight Premier League team. It's the second team I've been at now. Uh, I've been working in sport for about 13 years. Um, so I thought I would share with you one of the players and management's favourite dishes, which is going to be a carbonara. So a classic carbonara um, is usually made with egg yolks. This is going to have no egg in it at all, um, which you could argue is not classic, and it isn't. The reason I am showing you this dish today is because we all have to work with ingredients we've got and different environments. Now my environment is, is very buffet um, influenced, I guess you'd say. Um, and so the classic carbonara wouldn't work in that uh, environment, but it's still a dish that players and managers enjoy. And so I adapted it. Um, and I'm gonna share that with you today. Uh, there was one manager, Italian manager in particular, that I worked for that was very fond of carbonara. Um, so it wasn't an option not to put it on. So, um, and also to do, if you think about now with the pandemic and everything else that's going on in the world, um, we're having to adapt dishes and we're having to work with what we've got. Um, you may remember when, when the outbreak first happened, there were no eggs for a while. So this would have been the perfect opportunity to, to make this dish. So. I'm going to share it with you today and hopefully it's easy to follow. You should all have your recipe cards. So first things first, we've got our ingredients here. So I've got some, some nice pancetta. I've got my half an onion. I've got some chives. I've got a bit of parmesan. And then I've got my cream, my milk and my flour. So first thing we're going to do is prep the onion. Now what I like to do is I like to just cut that through on a slight angle just to take that little bit of gnarly bit out that no one really wants to eat. And it's kind of hard to chop at that point so I'm just going to peel my onion and, um, and then we're going to get going. So, nice fine chop. really fine. Now the thing with carbonara is that a lot of people tend to not use onion in it and a lot of people, a lot of Italian chefs that I've worked for tend to use onion or garlic, not both. Um, that's not the reason that I don't use garlic in this dish. I just happen to prefer the flavour that we're going to get because we're really going to caramelise these onions before we start. So that's our onions. And the weird thing is as well is that you could kind of argue, well, why, why did I go into sport? I, I actually fell into it. Just my hands, one second. So I was actually working in restaurant, hotel industry. Um, I was actually working for Michelle Rue at the time and I got a random call from a nutritionist that was looking for a chef to take care of the players when they're on the road. And, uh, but that's, that's the weird thing is when I was at college, I didn't necessarily ever see myself ending up in hotels and restaurants. And, and that's okay, that's okay to not wanna do that. I just didn't particularly want it, it wasn't for me. So, guys, quick word about chives. Chives are one thing that can make a dish look really, really nice or horrendous because it's a simple thing done really badly. And there's, there's, a, there's one secret to chopping chives. Really sharp knife and take your time with it. So most people just hack the life out of them. If you go very, very slowly and your knife is really, really sharp, they actually are a really nice garnish and they look really, really good. You don't need many. As I say, the amount of times you look at people's mise en place of chives and they're just hacked, they're all different 
sizes and look, strands in there and all sorts. But I'm going to show you this up close just to show you the difference between really taking your time and making them look nice. So, if you can see those, it's really, really nice and fine. Okay, so we are going to now grate some parmesan because, again, it's a carbonara. It's not, it's not a Michelin star um, dish. It's not a fancy dish, but we still want to make it look nice. And this is the nice thing about this dish. You can dress it up or dress it down. You can do it in a buffet environment. It's just going to taste amazing. Or you can do a couple of little twists, like we're going to make a parmesan crisp couple of truck drives and suddenly it's a dish worthy to serve in a restaurant. So what you're going to do is parmesan, you want half for the parmesan crisp and you want half that's going to go inside the carbonara. So you're going to want to weigh 40 grams, it's going to go in the dish and you want to weigh 40 grams, it's going to be for your crisp. So that's our parmesan, pop that in there. Hopefully you can see this all right guys, this is a strange way of doing it. Much easier if I was in college. But it is what it is and we are working with what we have. So next I am going to scale the, the wet ingredients. So, I need 142 gram or mil of cream, single cream. And then I need a little bit of milk, just 75 of the milk. And then that is going to be our ingredients are kind of ready to go. So, here we go. Let's make the Parmesan crisp while we think about it. So, hopefully you've got rings a little bit bigger than this at college because they work out much better if you do them a bit bigger. So, all I'm going to do is put a little bit of Parmesan. You've probably made these before. And if you have, you'll know not to leave the ring on when it goes through the oven because it's an absolute pain to get off, it just sticks to it. So I'm not going to make that mistake because I've done that plenty of times. So that's our two parmesan crisps, they're just going to go in the oven. Um, I'm not going to tell you time guys, you can just you just need to keep an eye on them and they're ready when they're ready, they're just, when they're golden, keep an eye on them because they go golden black very quickly. So. What we're going to do now is I'm going to pop on the water, give it a good pinch of salt, and we are going to start cooking the sauce for the carbonara. So I'm just going to heat the pan up, and the first thing we want to do is, do you remember what I was saying earlier, one of the fundamental flavours in this version is the onion, but it's about getting it really, really nice and caramelised. Um, and it's going to give it that real depth of flavour. So, just while that pan is heating up, the last thing I'm going to weigh is flour. We don't need much, we only need five grams. Now, the reason I'm adding flour is kind of the history of this dish is a friend of mine used to be a Italian chef, not used to be an Italian chef, she's still an Italian chef, but she used to work at a restaurant in North London uh, which served carbonara, and I loved the carbonara in there. Um, and I could never understand how in such a busy restaurant it was so creamy, it was never ever claggy. And um, she told me it was a bechamel base, they never actually use eggs in it, and this is an Italian restaurant, I'm not going to say which Italian restaurant. And um, so it gave me the idea, which is why I put this bit of flour in there, and that's why I use single cream. Because single cream gives it a cleaner flavour, but as you know, single cream just splits very easily. So I put the flour in there to stabilise the cream and eradicate the need for eggs. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put a little bit 
of oil in the pan and start getting our onions nice and golden. And the nice thing about this dish, it's such a mess on my worktop there. I was a messy chef at college as well. And I just turned this, guys, do yourself a favor, never get an induction stove. I've just moved into this house and it is an absolute pain. I swore I would never get an induction stove, but I inherited it. I didn't buy it. But it's uh, just another thing that I don't want to pay out for right now. So, enough about my personal problem. The stove is on again. The one thing I will say, it does kick out a good bit of heat. I'll give it that. I'll give it some credit before it packs up on me. So, onions are caramelizing now. So the nice thing, as I'm saying, is it's a two-stage or three-stage cooking process. So you can really take your time with this and do it, do it properly. So I'm just going to keep an eye on my Parmesan crisps. They're coming along nicely. So, nice colour on that. And then we will be ready to get the rest done. So I'm just going to chop up this pancetta. You can use streaky bacon if you want, and you can use back bacon. I actually use back bacon for the players because it's a bit healthier and the flavour's still pretty good. Doesn't really change it that much. Um, so you can you can adapt this dish. Excuse me, guys, I'm just washing my hands. You will be pleased to know. Okay. So these onions are coming along nice. Parmesan crisp is nearly done. So basically what we want, we just want to get these onions so they just start to turn golden. Now you could always throw in a little knob of butter in here at this point. I tend to not, because like I say, because I'm doing it for players, I tend to try and keep it a bit healthier, but it would certainly help the colour a bit. I'm going to do it the way that I've been doing it. I'm not going to change that. Okay. So, I need to almost there. I'm going to take that crisp out now. I think it's more or less there. <coughs> Have another minute. Don't let me forget that. Okay, onions are there, right. So look, we've got some nice colour on the onions. So I'm going to just pop those into my little bowl. Okay, and in the same pan, I'm going to start cooking my pancetta. So yeah guys, there's so many different elements, because I always get the same question, it's like, what made you go into sport, what made you go down the different line from, from people that go to college to be chefs? And the honest answer is, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't plan that, I, did, I knew that when I was at college, I didn't necessarily want to be, I, I never had a desire to own a restaurant, and I didn't really plan on going down the Michelin star road. I've worked in Michelin star, I just don't, it wasn't for me. And as I was saying earlier, that's okay. And it's okay to not know. I, you know, I was at college and I was just like, excited about food and really eager to learn. I had a massive appetite for knowledge, like for just learning a quicker way of doing stuff. And, um, but don't get freaked out if you don't, know what you want to do while you're there because I didn't I didn't know until I left. Right. Pumps and crispy coming out. Done. And they are nice and golden. Okay, I'm just gonna set these over there. And that pancetta is coming along nice and crispy. Is, 
such a new experience to be talking to a room full of people that I can't see. So I'm just become waffling. Excuse me. So guys, the last thing I need to wait is my pasta. So for this dish, which is a reasonably generous portion, see our bacon kind of there now. You want it good combination of crispy but not overcooked because you don't want you don't want little bits of what are those crisps called those bacon crisps you don't want those in it so that's ready to come out I'm gonna just pop that in my bowl and we're gonna use the same pan we're gonna keep all that flavour in there so that's my bacon that's my onions and now I just want a hundred grams of penne because we are going to start cooking that soon and then we're going to bring the sauce together while the pasta is cooking. Now you can cook this however you want. If you like it al dente, which hopefully you do, then great. But you can go a bit more if you want to go a bit more. So. We're going to cook this pasta now while we bring this sauce to the finish. Is that a word? I'm going to use it. Okay, so penne is going in. Now, I'm just going to drop this heat down a bit now because I don't really want to. I don't want to cook anything anymore. I just want to bring the sauce together. I'm going to drop it down. Hopefully, you can do it a bit quicker if you're working with gas than I am with this thing. But okay, so bacon's going back in. The onions are back in, and I am now going to add that little bit of flour that we talked about. Okay, the flour's in, and you just want to get that flour incorporated, cook it out a little bit, just as if you was making a um, bechamel sauce because you obviously you've got a bit of fat in there from the bacon and a bit of oil in there from the onions so that flour is going to absorb all of that so now what we can do is add our liquid and add a little bit at first because it's the same principle as, um, as making bechamel. If you pour it in too quick, you could end up getting a few lumps. There's not a lot of flour in there, to be fair. There's only a very small amount, but still enough in there to cause you a problem if you just slam the whole lot in. Okay. Just turning up the heat a bit now, because I still want those little starch cells to burst, which is going to thicken our sauce. And now, look, you can see this is at maybe half of the liquid. That's what you want at this point, where you've got a kind of cross between a bechamel and a paste. Okay. Once you get to that stage, you can pop the rest of the cream in, the cream and milk mix, rather. Okay. And still like with any recipe guys, don't put all of the liquid in, just keep a little bit back. You might not need it. You probably will. But you can always add, you can't take away one of the first rules you ever gonna learn at college. Okay, so our sauce is thickening up, so I think I am going to add the rest of this liquid. I think it's going to need it. The thing is as well, as soon as I add parmesan, which I'm going to do now, it's going to thicken even more. So, you can see just as soon as I add that parmesan, it's going, it's going thick again. But this is nice, this is a really generous amount of sauce. This is such a great dish to do because it's... It's a really luxurious dish, but because we're using single cream, 
and we're not using egg yolks, it's, it's, it's a lot less fat than the classic carbonara. So it feels like you're having a real amazing treat, even though actually you're having a really low fat version, but it doesn't feel like it. So last little bit of that. And what you can also do is just keep a splash because when you mix it through the pasta, the pasta is going to suck it all in. And then um, you might need to add a little bit more to that. So pasta's coming along nicely. So it's going to take another couple of minutes and then I think we'll be more or less ready to plate up. Okay guys, our pasta is more or less there now. Um, I'm just going to take these little babies that we made earlier, our little crisps, and um, I'm just going to pop them on the plate so we're kind of ready to plate up in a minute. Okay, so sauce is nice. Now you've noticed that I haven't put any salt in this dish. You generally won't need to because there's so much there's such a salty element to the um, to the pancetta, or if you're using streaky bacon or back bacon, definitely you will not need any salt. But what you will need is a really good raft of black pepper. Um, I always go a bit crazy with black pepper just because I'm a huge fan of it. Um, but even if you're not, it does really lend itself well to this dish. So you don't need to go maybe as crazy as I've just gone then. Um, so that's it, that's our sauce ready. That's our pasta ready, I'm just going to drain that now. And then I'm going to show you how we finish this dish. Okay. So, I'm going to add the sauce. Uh, the pasta to the sauce rather, not the other way around. Okay. Lovely. Okay, time to plate this up. Fun bit. You're going to get to eat soon, which is an amazing bit. So, guys, this is what we're left with, alright? This is what we want by the end of it. Really generous, creamy sauce, not claggy not runny, just nice mix in the middle. Okay. I'm just gonna plate this dish up. And this is such a nice way of doing it. And I tell you, anyone who's a fan of Carver and I, if you make this for them and they, they don't like it, I'll be absolutely amazed. So, we're just gonna dress this up. Couple of parmesan crisps, a few chives, and that turns a dish that you could quite happily serve on a buffet into, well, if I got that in an Italian restaurant, I wouldn't be unhappy with that. So guys, that is my non-classic, but very, very tasty carbonara. I hope you enjoy it, and I look forward to coming into the college and cooking with you guys when all this craziness is over. So thanks for your time today. Good luck with the dish.